Welcome to the University of Michigan Medical School Office of Research, Everything But the Science series, brought to you by the Grant Services and Analysis Office. These excerpts from our R01 Boot Camp Workshop are intended to assist faculty new to the NIH R series process think through best approaches to the administrative portions of grant submissions. So quickly, we can talk about justifications. I've already mentioned several times about making sure that your costs represent your um, specific aims. So the budget justification should then be easy um, because you can already tie them all back to your aims. Um, make sure, I think this was mentioned earlier in our conversation already, how to clearly describe the um, putting things forward in a way that clearly articulate um, what the needs are and how it reflects your specific aims. Um, thinking also about aligning, I've heard some suggest that it is best to sort of use a repetitive pattern through your justification so that it's easy for reviewers to follow. Um, we call them on ramps and off ramps. If they kind of have that extra thought where their mind wanders, you wanna get them back on an on ramp to see the next um, item. And then using this opportunity to say that you have the right tools. It shows that you're a well-prepared investigator. Um, I mentioned already that there's differences in the justification between modular and categorical. And so know that when you talk about the items of justification, it is at your discretion how you talk about them. Um, that is going to lead to grantsmanship. There are no very detailed rules around how to talk about specific items on a categorical. Um, it kind of rolls from, do you want to talk about it in a lot of detail, which could be then either criticized or maybe the details very necessary for that particular item to show how come it's needed. Um, so do you know that this is a place to exercise your grantsmanship? And again, we have more in the appendix material for you for that. Here are some helpful hints. You wanna use future verbs. When you talk about a person's role and how they are going to impact your project, it is in the future. Um, I've seen justifications before. Again, grantsmanship choice that spent about two thirds of a page on a categorical budget talking about all of the past successes of a particular investigator. I wanna remind you that the bio sketch is there for that purpose. Um, so really to help reviewers kind of hone in and directionally, it may be appropriate to talk about some past successes, but really you wanna be talking about what they're gonna be doing in the future. Um, you can't assume that a reviewer knows everything that you're thinking of. You may need to provide some extra justification about some things in order to make sure that they're um, they can understand where you're coming from and why you need an item of cost. And a warning in their number four about straying into the science. Um, we've had a couple proposals in the past that we're trying to justify um, using one approach versus another and the cost basis. Unfortunately, the review um, the Center for Scientific Review felt they had strayed into the science and saw their justification as circumventing the page limit on the science component. And so they were administratively rejected. Um, so you do want to be careful that you're walking a fine line to talk about finances and how they relate to the project goals, as opposed to actually justifying your science. They are going to spend far less time reading your justification than they're going to spend reading your research. Your research will always fund your proposal and make it a viable, fundable proposal. Um, the justification just helps them understand where you're coming from. So spend less time on the justification than the science by far, um, but know that they're looking for clarity in that justification. When you're talking about people, and again, I mentioned before about half of your budget might end up being focused on people. Um, we've had some kind of areas and topics come up to discuss um, that have had questions before. Um, I've already mentioned making sure you're linking people to the specific aims, but if it's unclear why someone has a role on your project, you might even want to say they are going to work specifically on this area of the science. Um, the non-key personnel we have had discussions about, do you call someone TBA or do you not call someone TBA? Um, on the one hand, you may not have hired someone yet. On the other, sometimes reviewers find it more palatable to understand that you already have a person up and running and ready to step into um, science and as soon as you get that award. Uh, 
by and large, we'll kind of tell people if you have someone serving in a similar capacity and um, they're non-key personnel, so you're not providing their bio sketch, uh, you could list their that name in there. That doesn't mean that has to be the person that performs the work later, uh, but sometimes that's a little bit more palatable to read viewers. And then listing, we talked a little bit about this idea of consultants before, and I'll share that we call we refer to consultants as people with a brain in a briefcase. Um, so they're doing, they're not, they're not doing, they're advising. So you want to watch the words you use when talking about your consultants, especially UM colleagues that are unpaid. You'll want to refer to them in the justification text as they'll be available to teach a technique, they'll be available to um, provide guidance or um, actual, you know, help on that sense of consulting. But if you find that you're using a lot of verbs that say they are going to run a process, they are going to um, hands on do some of the work, then perhaps they're not a consultant and you want to look at whether their role should be something else. Thank you for watching this video. For additional tools and resources, please see our website under the training and resources section or by reaching out through email at msgrants at umich.edu.